Good morning everybody. This is Jan from Garden Jen's Journey. This is the official last week in July uh, 2018 and I figured I'd take you for a walk through my garden and uh, show you how things are doing. Uh, it's been a while uh, since I took a video. I had some technical difficulties and and weather and all that good stuff and uh, as we're going through the video, you'll see my kittens running around. I showed you them uh, the last video. They're uh, 13 weeks old tomorrow, and so they're out exploring, and they just they just have a blast out here. So anyway, so you'll see them running around as we do the video today. Um, this is my extended garden where I planted my extra corn and mustard greens and things like that. And you can see how I was doing. My corn's gotten pretty decent size and then my mammoth sunflowers there and you can see they're not very mammoth right now they're actually kind of dwarf compared to what they should be but they're still nice green lush um, then my mustard greens and I have some eggplants planted there and some Italian parsley and this is my cucumber tower I had it planted in that but uh, cucumbers get root bound real easy so um, it started looking, you can see the yellow there um, they started doing that so I knew that um, it was not getting the nutrients it needed so I just gently tipped this over and dug the hole right there and popped off the bottom and gently tipped it all back up because it's all connected in this cage here and uh, you know tapped it down and gave it some water and it's doing wonderful It's getting the foliage is green again um, except for, you know, like I said, down at the bottom where I was starting to lose nutrients. And I'll probably get some more fertilizer to help it, um, you know, get the nutrients back. But it's producing very well. I've got cucumbers right there growing. And then all the potatoes behind it. That's from a bag of potatoes that had gone to, to sprout, really. And so we just kind of threw them all out here. Now I have a bunch of uh, potato plants going. And the kittens. <laughs> I gotta try to not step on or trip over them as we're walking because they just get under feet. They play so much. <clears throat> All right. Then over here is where I have my celebration squash. It's an acorn type squash and I have it growing up my um, dog pen here. And I thin it out. Um, I, I trimmed out the bottom and then the top to allow for good air circulation and so the pollinators can get to the flowers. Um, so it helps cut down on the uh, mold, uh, like the powdery mildew and the milky spore. Uh, it cuts down on that because there's air circulation in here. And we do have some uh, squash that's growing. See some right there. And some right there. So it's doing very, very well. This is my glass gem corn. It's still kind of short. Um, but it's, it's getting there. It's nice and lush and just really doing well. It has not put tassels out yet, so I know that it's still going to be growing a little bit taller. <clears throat> and then this is the rose uh, garden that's also being used for other things. Because I have uh, three roses in here out of my six that actually grew. So I have three roses and then um, since the other ones didn't grow back, I put my extra kale in here um, when I thinned out my other bed. I have some thyme on my grapevines in the back. And then uh, my <clears throat> sweet potatoes, they're doing very, very well. So I'm excited. We'll see if I actually get a crop. This is kind of an experiment in Zone 5B. I'm not sure if these sweet potatoes will actually pro produce anything because they need really warm weather. So again, it's just an experiment. I had a bunch of slips that came voluntarily out of my sweet potato. So I think I planted about uh, eight to 10 slips and I think half of them actually took and are growing. So we'll see. And then of course my chamomile and my snapdragon, my carrots. <clears throat> and this is my potato ditch, my original potato bed. <clears throat> Herbs. My valerian's dying back, uh, so it's time to trim that back. Um, the long shoots die, and then um, it shoots out some uh, new growth. 
<clears throat> and then my echinacea's getting pretty good size. I'll take you over there in a few. This is the flower bed, so to speak. I have my bee balm here, which is original. And then gallardias and marigolds and amaranth and coxcomb. And then I have peanuts down at the end, and we'll go there in a few. And then look at my tomatoes. They have gotten really, really big since the last time I, I show this to you. These are about chest high. Um, if I actually stood up to them, they are chest high on me. And about five foot six, so very tall. These in front are ponderosa pinks. And then towards the back I have romas. And then on the other side of the trellis I have a bumblebee um, cherry tomatoes. And then you can't see them very well because we got a lot of foliage going on. I uh, have a lot of milkweed for the monarch butterflies. And I do have some weeds in here. Um, I got weeded out a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, these are potatoes back here. And you can see how big they are. <clears throat> so I just kind of leave this area alone because the, the tomatoes are going to fall over on this side anyway. So I just kind of let it be. Um, the potatoes I'll harvest in the fall so it's not like I have to get to them right now. <clears throat> Alright, so I'll take you down this side of the herb garden. I have some calendula in here. And I can take this off finally. They're getting big enough. I've had to cover them because with my cats um, they try to use my garden as a litter box or whatever so um, I've made sure that I covered my small seedlings so they don't dig them up. Um, so yeah. Pink hyssop is doing really, really well. Uh, this is winter sown. Some lemon mint that's winter sown this year. So those are brand new this year. My white whore hound, this is new this year. I had a plant here before, a white whore hound, but it was not doing very well at all. Um, so we took that one out and replaced it with new seedlings, and it's doing very well. Echinacea, also known as purple cone flower really doing good then um, blue hyssop next door and this is sage this is a uh, three-year-old sage you see how big the bush gets <laughs> so it's doing very well and then right next to us yellow echinacea winter sown this year it'll get as big as the pink eventually and then I uh, some bee balm there and up there I have some buttercup squash there's actually a small one growing right there Back there is some more, uh, that's another sweet potato, vine. And then I have some fig trees planted right here. I lost them last year. It didn't grow back, so I planted two more. That one there and there. I have them in the tomato cages for support because they're very spindly. And also to kind of mark where they are until they grow back and, and are a you know, more uh, better plant. And then uh, these are sunflowers, sunrise sunflowers. <clears throat> and my plantains. These I leave here. They're considered weeds by many people, but they're actually a medicinal plant. So I let them grow. I actually harvested some herbs because the uh, narrow leaf plantain, which is what this one is, has uh, a greater concentration of the uh, beneficial compound that's in these plants. So I went ahead and I harvested some of the seeds so I can actually purposely plant some more of the narrow leaf next year. And then my hydrangea finally got a bloom on it and it's pink. I forgot what pink means. I think it means my soil is acidic. So, <clears throat> but anyway, that's a good one. And this was is what's left of my um, lettuce bed and most of it is starting to bolt. And then I have Italian herbs in here. So I'll replant this. <clears throat> And then my kale is starting to get up there. It's, start, it's time to start harvesting them so it grows a little better. Then my other sunflower here. <laughs> Alright, this is a, another look at the flower bed. You can see that cocks come there. Really, really pretty. And these are peanuts. Um, it's doing very well this year. I just, just started seeing some yellow flowers on it. So soon I'll open up, pollinate, and then I'll put the roots back down into the ground to make peanuts. So we'll see if we actually get some this year. And then this right here I just planted. I'm not sure if I'll actually get flowers this year or not because it is late planted. This is tansy. And this is the back side of my tomatoes. Again the ones up front are ponderosa pink. 
Then we have Romas here. And then I have peppers tucked in along them. And you can see I have dill everywhere. And then some more sunflowers. These were um, just volunteer sunflowers. These are lemon queens. Oh, actually, these ones aren't. These ones are yellow sunflowers. <clears throat> the ones over here are volunteers. This is my lemon queen. And my mammoth sunflower, which I had just shown you at the beginning of the video, these should be a lot taller than these guys. These guys are about six, seven feet tall. And mammoths, I believe, are supposed to get up to like 12 feet. <clears throat> but yeah, these are yellow sunflowers. I got a bunch of different varieties from the seed swap, so um, I was excited because I wanted to see what different varieties of sunflowers look like. And then I can see I actually got some tomatoes going on there. Exciting. <clears throat> and some flowers tucked in there. Again, this is a really dense area right now with everything that's growing, but there's flowers and things, so the pollinators have all sorts of goodies back here. Tucked under my sunflowers, I have kohlrabi. And then I have some leeks. <clears throat> this is a broccoli bed back here. And then these are Brussels sprouts. And these ones are volunteer sunflowers. These are the lemon queens. <clears throat> and my beans. And then I have more beans over here. And you can see my pollinator friend. Isn't he nice? Unfortunately, this year, these guys and some tansy wasps and things like that, they're my only pollinators. Um, we lost our honeybees, and I'm guessing it's because we have a crop farmer not far from us, about a mile or so, um, who uses chemicals on their crops. And uh, so I'm thinking those chemicals wiped out our honeybees. So it's, it's a sad thing, but... Um, at least we still have these guys doing their job. So I do still have pollinators around. <clears throat> so you can see my beans are doing very well. I've got um, like five different varieties of beans. These are Kentucky Wonders. This is a pumpkin here. <clears throat> these are trail, Cherokee Trail of Tears. And look at how lush and just full this plant is. And then I have um, I have sugar peas and snow peas. This is the broadleaf plantain. Um, it's like it's a narrow leaf counterpart that I just showed you. And it's a very good plant. It's called the band-aid plant. You can use this for um, treatment of minor wounds, insect bites, and things like that. But um, I, like I said, I let these grow because they are medicinal. And so, and they're not evasive or anything. So, <clears throat> I just let them be. These are purple cauliflower. You can see how big they are. They're getting there. Slowly but surely. Then beans. I just had my son harvest some beans yesterday. And he got uh, two, uh, two gallons of block bags full of beans yesterday. <clears throat> My cat meat mint that I transplanted last year. It's really big. There's some more of that plantain there. The broccoli. It's finally got a head on it. Not quite the head I'm looking for, but it's it's producing, which is good because I have a hard time growing broccoli and stuff. They just don't produce. My cabbages are starting to curl in and, and form that head. So exciting there. I've got three different cabbages I'm growing this year. So exciting. Some more leeks. I'm growing a lot of leeks this year because I like leeks. <clears throat> and then this is my this is my very sad corn. This is sweet corn. You can see how short it is. The pallets are four foot high. And uh, so to give you an idea that some of this corn is not even four foot over here, it's kind of funny. <clears throat> and I have some more beans tucked in along here with the corn. They're a good companion plant, so I just have them tucked in there. And then some more tomatoes. I had garbanzo beans right here. I had, uh, this was full of garbanzo beans, but the, the garbanzo beans did not do well. I mean, they all turned brown and, you know, died on me. So I ripped them out, most of them. I was trying to see if any of them were going to survive, but obviously this one's dying. 
And so I ripped them out and I put the tomatoes here. And there's nothing wrong with my soil because even though these guys are dead, my tomato plants are growing and producing. So uh, I'll have to see what's up with garbanzo beans and why, you know, what they need to thrive because obviously this this area is not a good area for them. <clears throat> and I have one more um, slip, sweet potato slip I planted here. That was while it was left over. And then the um, fig tree that was not doing too well. It was growing a lot of shoots underneath, but they weren't coming through the soil. So it was still alive. So I put it in here and covered it with a cloche made just from a, a recycled uh, jug. And it seems to be doing okay. I'm starting to see some shoots come out. So maybe it just needed warm weather. I don't know. But anyways, that's what's in here. It's not broccoli. I just haven't taken the tag off that. <clears throat> and then my lemongrass is doing very well. It's doing a lot better in this container than it did in my ground last year. So exciting. <clears throat> I'll take you out to our elderberries. They're doing very well. <clears throat> All right. And our elderberry bushes. These guys are three years old now. And uh, they're about seven feet tall. So um, very, very good. Um, they just finished blooming and they're starting to uh, make the berries on them. So it's going to be time to start covering them with um, a tool. That way um, the birds don't eat them. Because birds like elderberries as much as we do. And my other one. This guy was the one that kept getting broke because people kept forgetting it was here. And this guy is about six feet tall. So it's doing very well. But I'll show you a pest that we're dealing with. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Japanese beetles. Yeah, they're a pain to deal with. We got a lot of them here. But um, I just knocked them into a bucket of soapy water when I see them. And that kind of takes care of them. Um, so we do there. And then in the back, that's a marshmallow plant. So it's doing very, very well. This area is quite marshy, wet and whatever. And so um, I winter sowed some, and then one's a transplant from another area. And it's just doing very, very well. So I might be harvesting some of that this year. So excited. And then uh, my ducks, <laughs> my dirty, dirty ducks, they love playing in water and in muck. So I just cleaned out their water, uh, their um, drinking water. I just do it by letting it run over so it makes, makes this little area soppy for a little bit and they just love digging in it. But my husband had built them a pond and they really love using that pond. I'm going to have to uh, clean it out in a little bit. but. So this is the finished duck run, the expanded duck run for our ducks. So they're excited about that. Um, I think I have at least one other hen uh, from the original, uh, or the, the eight that I got this spring. I think I have one additional hen. I'm hoping I have more than just one because I don't need a lot of males. I need a lot of females because I have a lot of people requesting duck eggs. So. But anyways, that is the journey today, how it's going in the garden. Everything's beautiful and lush. We got some good rainstorms this past week. And I'm just so, so thankful because it's really, really helped. The sun is just starting to come out. Um, this is early in the morning. <clears throat> and we had a rainstorm this morning, actually. So um, this is what it looks like right now. And I'm just so, so thankful. And uh, we'll see how the harvest goes. Um, I won't be making a video for a couple weeks. I have a major surgery coming up next week. So um, I will be off the air, so to speak, um, until I can get back on my feet. But I will definitely be bringing you an update um, as soon as I am able to do so. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. This is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Bye-bye.